Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA. I make videos for NFL. All these videos, they get posted right here on this subreddit right here. It's called DF Sports. And my username is Shook. You can find my posts. Um, I make updates with all the news that comes out um, prior to the slate. You can ask me questions about the slate, um, pivots, stuff like that. Um, pretty much anything you want, I'll reply to you. So that'll be linked down below. And if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can get a hold of me here on Twitter or through Reddit Messenger. Either one works. So <clears throat> got one of the most disgusting showdown slates I think we're ever going to witness in our lifetime, to be honest. I, I don't think we're going to ever see a showdown slate worse than this. Um, so buckle in, get ready. I'm along for the ride. Um, and let's do it. So before we get into the breakdown, um, if you are interested in, you know, joining my discord, it'll be in the Reddit post link down below, you know, where I've in-depth content going over each slate, player pools for cash and tournaments, private videos, just a whole bunch of stuff that will be linked in there as well. All right. So my lineups from this week, I had a pretty bad week. Um, Sunday, I didn't cash on the main slate. Uh, showdown, I chopped, if I recall correctly, and then Monday night, I chopped as well. So overall, it was a losing week for me. Probably, I think my first losing week of the season, if I, I kind of want to say. Um, but yeah, well, it wasn't a great week. Hoping to turn, or, turn it around for this showdown slate. Um, but I'm definitely going to be going pretty, pretty light on this showdown slate. I don't think I'll be putting too much volume in with how bad this looks so all right so we're just gonna go team by team and we'll go by player price so you have adam thielen here at the top at 11 8 i mean i feel like he's deserved this price point he's the highest price player on the slate um you know i don't know if he's going to continue to keep up 10 plus targets a game on you know pretty good efficiency as well like 11 on 13 11 on 13 7 on 8 5 on 6 um but i do think he is you know has one of the higher floors on the slate and if he gets into the end zone um he does have the upside to absolutely break this slate out of the water so um gotta have interest in dealing here at the top i think he is a very very solid play i prefer him to the quarterbacks as well if we're not considering salary so, like Thielen here at the top, Bryce Young at 9-8, I think he's just fine. He's just, like, there for me. Um, last I look at the totals, um, the Panthers were still dogs, I want to say, with um, with Fields doubtful. So, looks like they're going to be playing from behind here like they do as usual or projected to be playing from behind here like they do as usual, which means, you know, Bryce Young is going to chuck when he's out there. Now, will he be efficient? No, probably not. Um, also, very, very turnover prone. Um, you know, a lot of defenses are getting to him very, very easily. So you definitely have to keep that in mind as well. But he's a quarterback. They've generally had pretty high floors on showdown slates because raw points definitely do matter. Um, so I, I think he's a safe play. You know, no strong takes here. Um, we'll talk about Bangett on the other side of this game, who I think is solid as well. So both the quarterbacks in play to me, you know, no strong takes. I, th I think they're just fine. You have Chubba. You have Sanders, um, 8K for Chubba, 5, or 5.2K for Sanders. Also, no real strong takes here. I think Chubba is fine. Miles Sanders kind of been on a limit of late. Chubba, I think, has won, kind of won the job. Um, last week, we saw Chubba play 46. Now, Miles Sanders' snaps did increase a little bit. Um, so, Chubba is probably going to be much, much more popular than Miles Sanders. And I think Miles Sanders probably will be a little bit more involved in the passing game. So if you kind of want to go with like a game script game here where you think Carolina is playing from behind and maybe fade Chubba and play Miles Sanders, I think that's something you could do in tournaments. But both running backs are kind of just there for me. I think I prefer the Chicago running backs. Like I, I much prefer Foreman um, over both the Carolina running backs, and it's not really close to me. Um, 
so there are just fine options. And then, like I said, we have Chark. Doubtful looks like he is not going to be playing this Thursday. That's going to open up a ton, a ton of values here. So Hayden Hurst at 4.8K, you know, not playing a ton of snaps. You have Tommy Trumbull and him kind of splitting the snaps right now. I think I prefer the price point on Trumbull. Hurst is a guy with a really, really, really low floor. He kind of needs to get into the end zone at this price point, maybe even twice to kind of have a ceiling game. So... Not a big fan of Hurst, but obviously he is playable. I think I'd only consider him in like large field 20 max, 150, 150 max tournament stuff. I'm not going to go there in my one lineup. I, I hate playing guys that are touchdown dependent. Um, so not a huge fan of Hurst there. And then we do have the kickers priced down on this slate. So I actually do think they are okay options, but we're going to talk about some value that I really like on this Panther side. So it's really up to you. In lower total games, I think it is easier for kickers to be optimal because in lower total games, you know, if the kickers score like three field goals, a lot of the time the skill position players are not going to be doing too great, right? So kickers are interesting, definitely to me. Um... You know, Panthers D, I don't love it. I think I'd rather play the Chicago D. We'll talk about them in a minute. And then, like I said, the value here. I think Jonathan Mingo is a phenomenal value, um, especially, you know, with um, where is um, with uh, DJ Chark most likely not going to be, be playing. So Mingo's snaps have been increasing every week. He basically played like 100% of the snaps last week, I want to say. Yeah, he played basically 100% of the snaps last week. Now... Um, when you have a value who is now the wide receiver two playing 100% of the snaps at 2.8K, no matter who he is, he is going to project pretty decently for his price at this price point. And the expectation of targets, I would say, would be around four to five for him. So he is going to stand out to me as one of the best value plays on this slate. And then we also have another value that I think looks really, really good as well in Terrace Marshall. Last week, he played 31 snaps, but now we have no DJ Chark this week, so he's going to get a boost as well. I like him quite a bit. Tremble, I think, is fine. I think I prefer Tremble to Hayden Hurst. Price points adjusted. Um, and then, you know, I don't think there's much else I'd, I'd consider. Um, I think, you know, just going to the value plays in Terrace and Mingo, I think they're just too good to consider anyone really else um for me so um yeah this carolina team is definitely interesting um preferably the value and Thielen for me up at the top so it looks like justin fields isn't going to be playing here so big at nine two i think he's a solid play you know um you know not going to be too efficient through the air um i don't think he has a crazy ceiling but you know he's not he's a guy that can get a little bit done on the ground as well. So it helps his floor a little bit. He's almost below 9K as well. So I like Begant. I think he's a solid quarterback play. I think DJ Moore is okay. I think I prefer Thielen on the other side of this game. I think we could just see the Chicago Bears just run the ball a ton here. So more just a tournament play. I like Begant though. And then with the running backs, I think Foreman personally to me stands out as one of the better plays on the slate. Um, so Herbert is on IR. It looks like he's doubtful to play. So I don't expect him to be able to give it a go here. So Foreman, I'm expecting, you know, a ton, a ton of volume for him. It's a, it's a great, great spot up against Carolina as well. Looking at the snaps for the running backs last week for Chicago, you saw Foreman play 39 of the 67 snaps. And you saw Rashawn Johnson play 20. Um, but they were also playing from behind as well. Um, still got 20 touches, obviously. Uh, Foreman not going to be too involved in the passing game, but I'm exp expecting a ton, a ton of volume for him. I really like Foreman at 8-6. Mooney, uh, I don't love. I think he's overpriced, especially with Justin Fields out. I don't think they're going to be wanting to, you know, Mooney's a guy that kind of has a big ceiling when he catches a long you know, touchdown. I don't really see Big End kind of airing it out here. I, I just don't. So I think Mooney's a bit overpriced. Now, the guy I really like here is Cole Komet at 6,600. So taking a look at Komet snaps, he's basically also playing the entire game. He's also benefited um, even more with the fields out with those short, low dot passes. So provides a nice floor with touchdown upside as well. So I really like Komet. 
kicker, like I said, they're, they're fine. And I think Bears D is a pretty solid play. So um, Bryce Young, pretty turnover prone. Um, a lot of defenses, they've been able to get to Bryce Young as well. So, and if the Panthers are projected to be playing from behind, a defense really kind of has a ceiling when the um, opposing quarterback is going to be dropping back a lot more. And what I mean by that and why that's the case is because when they're dropping back more, defenses have more opportunities for sacks, interceptions, pick sixes, fumbles, et cetera, et cetera. So it kind of just raises the defense's floor or ceiling, right? So I think the Bears D is a pretty solid play on the slate, but I think they'll be pretty popular. Rashawn Johnson, just there for me. Don't love it. Don't hate it. I think I'd rather just go up to Foreman. Um, and then there is a value play here. I think we could consider in Tyler Scott. Looking at his snaps, he played 39 of the 67. He is a playable value. He would be like a pivot off of the Panthers value, but I think that might be getting a bit too cute. I think I just prefer the Panthers value. And I'm not really going to consider anyone else on this team. So um, hope you guys had a good night. Hopefully, you know, you don't do go too crazy on this show on Slate. It's probably the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. And I will talk to you all in the next one.